Hello there, and welcome. My name is Jason Millwood, and you are listening to Plugged into Virta, the electric vehicle charging podcast. The future of mobility is electric. In this podcast, we'll discuss about the newest and hottest topics in the world of e-mobility, smart EV charging, energy management, and the business around it. We'll go under the surface and discuss openly about the challenges, opportunities, solutions, and trends. We'll give you honest, fact-based information and tell you what it means in practice in plain English. So, if you want to hear insights from top experts, learn more about the world of EV charging and the future outlook, or just want to listen to some inspiring stories from around the world of EV charging, this podcast is for you. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about roaming and just why roaming is the buzzword in electric vehicle charging. My guest today is Pierre Purola Salmi. The roaming market has had a real boost last year, with the growth of roaming events expected to multiply in 2021. Every electric vehicle driver wants to do e-roaming, but what is e-roaming? What are the challenges in EV roaming at the moment? So before we dive into today's subject and talk about the future of electric vehicle roaming, could you, Pia, introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about yourself? Yeah. Hi. Hi, Jason. Thanks for for, um, inviting me um, in this session. Uh, my name is Pia Purola Salmi, as, as you said. Uh, I'm the uh, manager of roaming operations at Virta. I joined the company April 2020. Um, yeah, and I have a, a quite a bit of uh, background in, in mobile um, or telecom, um, mainly in roaming area, but also in other other areas. So roaming as, as, as a concept is, is quite uh, familiar to me. EV roaming is a bit different from mobile roaming, but not that much. But let's uh, let's talk about it in a okay. bit. So let's start with the basics. What is e-roaming? And we're all familiar with roaming when it comes to mobile phones, of course, but what does that mean for electric vehicles? Uh, basically, in the very simplest way, um, it's the EV driver of one charging network uh, that who can use the charging points of another network. Um and you can do it with one customer account. So basically RFIDs or or your app. Um, I have, or we have um, um, identified three layers in the roaming. Um, in the core is the, the your own charging network. On top of that is the Virta charging network. And all charging networks powered by Virta are available for you at no extra cost. Uh, with uh, 400 customers and 25,000 charging points. Um, resting on, on the two is the external roaming network. Um, that is the roaming hubs, Hubject, Girev, eClearing, um, or OCPI, or a combination of, of, uh, of both. So basically that's, that's what uh, e-roaming is. So why is roaming such an important service for EV drivers? Why does everyone want to use e-roaming? Well, as you said, um, the roaming market had a real boost last year, um, and the growth of of roaming transactions are expected to multiply this year. Um, Basically, for CPOs, it it means additional utilization rate of of their charging uh, points. And for EMPs, um, the the, the EV drivers will be able to um, use your home network app and RFDI while driving around. And a CPO and an EMP is what exactly? Just to... um, The CPO is the charge point owner mm-hmm. um, and the EMP is the electrical mobile supplier, um, the one who has the customer relation with the EV driver. So the market is clearly not mature yet. Uh, what are the challenges in EV roaming at the moment, do you feel? Um, the biggest obstacle of roaming is the protective uh, pricing of some players. Um, if we cannot agree on a fair and reasonable roaming pricing, eventually legislation will intervene, just as as what happened with mobile phones or mobile roaming. Um is that because individual countries have different laws uh, regarding the regulation of such uh, prices and whatnot? Yeah, well, there isn't any legislation, and okay. that's that's the the the, the issue here. Um, some le- uh, markets, um, leading markets, uh, for instance, uh, Switzerland, um, the market players have set uh, a decent pricing for roaming with each other. 
um, where it benefits everyone. The charge points uh, get more uh, customers and the EV drivers get a better um, charging coverage in, in, uh, in the networks. Besides the decent pricing, what else is going on in the EV roaming market? Um, as, as we said regarding the legislation, um, the taxation is, is also one thing um, that needs to be solved. Um, the international roaming environment is a complex term of tax in terms of taxation, as there is no single market le- legislation. Um, Therefore, one should be cautious when selecting a partner and a business model for this. Um, and we, Virta, have initiated the uh, work for single market legislation uh, between the Commission and leading market players in the industry. Um, as a forerunner, uh, Virta built its own VAT model to be compliant, uh, 100% compliant with all EU markets to meet the legislation even in this fragmented and immature legislative environment. As there are multiple players and technologies for roaming, it may be complicated for a single CPO or EMP um, to set up a commercially viable roaming operation by itself. Um, And that's why the aggregators uh, such as charging platforms are in key role in organizing the cost efficient roaming offering. Um, one needs to consider um, invoicing, um, settlements, and so on and so forth. Um, and Virta will handle all of that on your behalf. Okay. And where do you see roaming being in the next five years, perhaps, in this legislation? Do you think that will be nailed down? Um, in terms of the pricing itself, um, I hope the market itself will will adjust uh, um, and, and find a... a s- Um, a, a viable uh, uh, solution to it. Um, basically, self-regulating, uh, I, I think, is is the key. Um, in terms of the taxation, um, like I said, um, we are 100% compliant with with all EU markets. So, in that sense, what, whatever the legislation is, uh, we will be able to to solve uh, that on your behalf. So what about the consumer? How is it going to affect them at the end of the day? How, how will they see this uh, affecting their lives? Well, basically, uh, as I said, reasonable pricing itself. But for the EV driver, I would, I would think that uh, there are more available charging points with, with uh, m- more, more CPOs and, and EMPs on in, in terms of roaming um, market. So there are new players and, and also availability. Um, for for the EV driver itself, it's basically still the same same thing. You 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 go from from Switzerland to to a neighboring country, and and you can or a neighboring city, and you can use your your same uh, app in in uh, so in charging. Six different apps or ten different RFIDs. You just use one. You just use one, and it's nice and, and it's yes, exactly. Okay. So in, in, in one sense, I would say that it, it will just uh, be, you will be better served in, in, in sense. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, Pia, and uh, good luck with the future. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. And that's it for this episode of Plugged Into Virta, the electric vehicle charging podcast. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, don't forget to follow and subscribe, and please share it to your colleagues and friends. We appreciate all your feedback, reviews, and ratings too. You can connect with us on LinkedIn at Virta Limited. And if you're looking for more information about EV charging, e-mobility, and energy management, visit us at virta.global. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Let's take charge of the future together.